So if you look at uh, question number two, you should be able to uh, get the uh, vertical asymptote right away. What's the vertical asymptote in full? The whole thing, how would you, how would you describe the uh, vertical asymptote? Oh, wonderful, x equals to two, because uh, x when x is equal to two, the denominator becomes zero, and then the whole fraction will become undefined, right? So that's a whole story. And therefore, we will go ahead and draw. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and circle the square and right next to the uh, parentheses x minus two, just to uh, just to tell myself that because of the square, there wouldn't be any kind of sign change. There's no sign change because of the square. So uh, we will see uh, whether it's going to be positive and negative. Oh, actually, I'm going to make a comment. See if you can make sense out of it. And this is one simple yet important sense-making uh, process. I'm going to say this. This fraction right here is always positive. Can you see why? Everything is squared, right? I mean, the 3 is positive. The x is squared. The x minus 2 is always is squared. That means this whole fraction can only be positive. So this is another sense that you want to have. Whenever you see a square, you're like, ah, that's always positive. So we can be pretty sure that uh, as the graph goes towards the uh, vertical asymptote, it's going this direction. We're pretty sure about this. But uh, well, uh, we're going to make the other uh, points and asymptotes before we uh, conclude that. Can you tell the horizontal asymptote? Ooh, wonderful. Y is equal to three. Because when X is infinitely large, the minus two, eh, doesn't matter. So that means you are reducing this whole thing to three X squared over X squared, and you simplify it, that would be just three. Okay, so once you know the reason, it's a lot easier to uh, determine what the uh, horizontal asymptote is. And then we look at the uh, we look at the uh, x intercept and the y intercept. Well, the x intercept is to uh, think about the fraction being zero, which means the numerator must be zero. What x value would cause the uh, numerator to be zero? That would be zero zero. And then uh, what about the y-intercept? Well, if the x-intercept is 0, 0, the y-intercept would automatically be 0, 0. So now, how do we draw this graph? How do we draw this graph? So, uh, so this is how it's going to go. Again, this graph, it's all positive. There is no way for this graph to dip below the x-axis. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and draw a graph like this. Now, what about this square right here? How should we uh, acknowledge this square? Remember how we did the uh, quadratic equation? Like this, right? Remember? So we call this so-called a bounce, or you say we bounce, it bounces, uh, it, uh, it bounces at the vertex. Now, the reason why we say it's a bounce is just another way of saying that is no sign change, All right? There's no sign change, therefore it bounces. And for us, it will be exactly the same thing because because there is no sign change, it's going to bounce. Okay? There's no sign change because uh, it's x squared. And then on the other side, then we have something like this. Would anyone want to ask a question? Yes. Ooh, how can you see the question is, can you ask the question one more time? 
how can it cross the horizontal asymptote? Can horizontal asymptote be crossed? Yes. That was the first thing that I told you, right? I showed you a picture. I said, make sure that you don't overlap the meaning of vertical and horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes could be crossed. Will it be crossed all the time? It depends. And because you asked the question, I think uh, now we didn't ask it here. How about we explore this? Where, where, okay, where did the, uh, can we find out where? That would be a bit of a challenge, actually. Uh, now, if you are in honors uh, algebra two, they actually ask you uh, where the uh, graph cuts the uh, horizontal asymptote. And the way you do it, it's very simple. I can show you the way, but I'm not gonna finish it. So we know, we know for a fact that the, uh, the y uh, equals to three is our horizontal asymptote, right? So you could simply do this. Oh, actually it's not that hard. I thought it was gonna be hard, but it's not. So we can actually finish this. All right, you multiply the denominator to the other side. Well, what's, what's, uh, what's uh, catching your attention here? What can we do? Uh, we can do the script, but before that, we have one something easy. Not factor. Cancels the three. We can divide three on both sides. Then we square root. Ooh. 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 Actually, that could be a that could be a little bit of a problem. So let me write down first x minus two square x square. Uh yeah, the little bit of a problem is this. Let me go ahead and put it this way. Yeah, probably this way. Can you see two perfect square right here? Yeah. Let's factor it. So it's like A plus B, A minus B, okay? So uh, so that means uh, you have uh, two X minus two here, and then you have just negative two right here. So uh, you can divide the negative, negative two over. So two X minus two is equal to zero. So two X is equal to two. X is equal to one. So if you actually do it, okay? Now, this is not something that I expect you to do, but if you're ever curious, like, hey, would it cross the uh, horizontal asymptote? And we say, yes, it does. Actually, it does cross the horizontal asymptote and it would cross it right here. So uh, if I have to correct my graph, it will be something like this. And because of this, you will also know that uh, to the right-hand side of the... Uh, uh, vertical asymptote, there wouldn't be a uh, cross of the horizontal asymptote. So, so yes, so it could, horizontal asymptote could be crossed, and uh, but um, just make sure that you know how to draw the graph approaching to the vertical asymptote. In this case, because it's always positive, so it would both be going up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you mean uh, here? Here? Below? Yeah. Oh, I just simplified like x minus x. Uh, here? Oh, uh, well, to make this statement uh, true, right? So uh, I just divide negative two on both sides. So that means this is gone. And this is the only part that could ever make the whole equation zero. So we find out what X value would make it zero. So add two over, and then you divide by two. Then we find out that when X equals to one, the whole thing becomes zero. And this is the part, okay? And by the way, this is also an SAT tip. If you have an option of picking a square root or factoring, you always factor. Because if you square root, you're missing some solutions. So make sure you keep that in mind. If you have the chance of, uh, if you have the option of taking square root or factoring, you always factor. All right, so this is the graph for number two.
Okay. So whenever you see square, that means there's no sign change and there's no sign change. You just keep going. Now, could you go ahead and take a look at number one? Okay. The one next door. 